May 19th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Romans chapter 1 from the New Testament. From Paul, a slave of Christ Jesus, called to be an apostle, set apart for the gospel of God. This gospel he promised beforehand through his prophets in the Holy Scriptures concerning his son who was a descendant of David with reference to the flesh who was appointed the Son of God in power, according to the Holy Spirit, by the resurrection from the dead, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through him we have received grace in our apostleship to bring about the obedience of faith among all the Gentiles on behalf of his name. You also are among them, called to belong to Jesus Christ, to all those loved by God in Rome, called to be saints, grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. First of all, I thank my God through Jesus Christ for all of you, because your faith is proclaimed throughout the whole world. For God, whom I serve in my spirit by preaching the gospel of his Son, is my witness that I continually remember you, and I always ask in my prayers, if perhaps now at last I may succeed in visiting you according to the will of God. For I long to see you so that I may impart to you some spiritual gift to strengthen you. That is, that we may be mutually comforted by one another's faith, both yours and mine. I do not want to be unaware, brothers and sisters, that I often intended to come to you and was prevented until now, so that I may have some fruit even among you, just as I already have among the rest of the Gentiles. I am a debtor both to the Greeks and to the barbarians, both to the wise and to the foolish. Thus, I am eager also to preach the gospel to you who are in Rome. For I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is God's power for salvation to everyone who believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For the righteousness of God is revealed in the gospel from faith to faith, just as it is written, the righteous by faith will live. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of people who suppress the truth by their unrighteousness, because what can be known about God is plain to them, because God has made it plain to them. For since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes, his eternal power and divine nature have been clearly seen, because they are understood through what has been made. So people... Are without excuse. For although they knew God, they did not glorify Him as God or give Him thanks, but they became futile, and their thoughts and their senseless hearts were darkened. Although they claimed to be wise, they became fools and exchanged the glory of the immortal God for an image resembling mortal human beings or birds or four footed animals or reptiles. Therefore, God gave them over in the desires of their hearts to impurity to dishonor their bodies among themselves. They exchanged the truth of God for a lie and worshiped and served the creation rather than the Creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. For this reason God gave them over to dishonorable passions, for their women exchanged the natural sexual relations for unnatural ones. And likewise, the men also abandoned natural relations with women and were inflamed in their passions for one another. Men committed shameless acts with men, and received in themselves the due penalty for their error. And just as they did not see fit to acknowledge God, God gave them over to a depraved mind to do what should not be done. They are filled with every kind of unrighteousness, wickedness, covetousness, malice. They are rife with envy, murder, strife, deceit, hostility, They are gossips, slanderers, haters of God, insolent, arrogant, boastful, contrivers of all sorts of evil, disobedient to parents, senseless, covenant breakers, heartless, ruthless. Although they fully know God's righteous decree that those who practice such things deserve to die, they not only do them, but also approve of those who practice them. God, you know how much I love Romans in the Bible. I think what is amazing is we could study each verse 
just one verse a year for the rest of our lives. And I'm pretty sure we still wouldn't get all that Romans encompasses. It's just a powerful, powerful book. So to read 30 some odd verses each day um, and have time for it to settle in our heart is going to be a little bit hard. So I just hope and pray that everyone listening today just goes back and reads and rereads Romans over and over again. Uh, there's just uh, there's just so much in there. And while we're at it, God, could you possibly give me some of the writing ability that you gave Paul? In seven verses, he manages to lay out the entire gospel for non-believers. He gives a call to action for believers, and he blesses them. <laughs> in seven verses. Paul's just amazing. You know, it was interesting. I was going through my notes the ones that are in my Bible uh, about Romans. And I have a note next to the end of chapter one that says, that says society not only allows this type of behavior, but it also blesses these behaviors. I think about that so much that we're so quick to point our finger to other people and say, well, at least I'm not doing that. <laughs> But other people aren't what we're called to live up to. We're called to live up to uh, your sinless son, Jesus Christ. And we know that that is impossible except through, through you and your grace and your forgiveness. Can we even begin to head down that path of working on that? But I think about, you know, just events lately where, where there was a sports sports player who came out as gay and of course made the front page of of all of these magazines and then the president called to congratulate him I don't, I don't know the word for it congratulate him we live in a society where sinful nature is condoned and it's not only okayed by the general public it's actually encouraged um, by peers uh, by mentors by society by TV and entertainment we are taught at a very young age to be sexualized we're taught at a very young age uh, that it's all about us we're taught at a very young age to be materialistic and want things <laughs> Again, making it all about us. And how do we overcome this world? How do we quit worshiping the creation, as Paul put it, and get back to the creator who created this creation? How do we get away from our sinfulness, our arrogance, our desire to not only, <laughs> to not only seek out sin, do sin but then go out and get other people to sin with us maybe so we don't feel so bad i don't i don't know i can <laughs> i can only talk for me god i know in my world it's all about me when i am sinning it's because i am a spoiled brat and i want something uh, and nothing's going to come in my way nothing sadly including you in me getting what it is i want and sin happens. I'm not saying I am right by, by any stretch of the imagination, God. I'm just saying I know that for me, it's my arrogance. It's all about me. It's all about me. It's all about the world I live in. It's all about how that world reacts and interacts in my world. And boy, if, if somebody in my life is willing to give approval to my life even though I know that what I'm doing is wrong I maybe I tend to listen to them a little bit more give their opinion a little bit more weight if they're willing to go along with what something I'm doing that's wrong but the flip side of it too I th I think about this a lot that uh, during my life where I was not walking with you God I, I was so incredibly far away from you Nobody could even talk to me about you because I didn't want to hear anything. And I was sending up a storm, most definitely. I know I'm forgiven for all those things I did because we've had long conversations about them. But 
I think the thing that breaks my heart over and over and over again that I just really struggle with letting go is how many people I approved during that time. Their choice to be selfish, their choice to be sinful, their choice to do things against you. I approve those things. I helped people do them. So it's not enough, God, to sit on the sidelines and work on ourselves to become better Christians. I know you can see my air quotes I'm doing. Better Christians. It's not enough for that. We're supposed to have this amazing love in our heart like you do for us. We are to love everyone else, not just the easy people to love, but everyone. And if we truly love everyone, we will fear you over them and we will hold them to standards and not let them sin. We at least will vocalize our concern over that. They still have to <laughs> have to make that choice. But all those times, God, that I was more afraid of what people would think if I called them on their sin, they would call me a hypocrite. I am a sinner. Who am I to say anything yet? The Bible's pretty clear <laughs> of what I am actually supposed to call out and why I'm supposed to call someone out, rebuke them. It's out of love. It's not out of malice or maliciousness. It's because I truly love them and don't want them to continue in that sin so that they can grow closer to you. Not so I can say, aha, at least I'm better than you. I don't do that sin. God, I think this chapter, this very first chapter of Romans is going to touch a lot of people's lives and it's going to make a lot of people feel uncomfortable. Because I think a lot of people think they're going along just fine, going to church, reading the Bible. But they're not holding true to what the Bible says and what you have told us we can and can't do. All of our boundaries start to get really squishy. We don't want to offend people. Really? Because then you don't love them enough. <laughs> That's exactly what Paul's saying. We don't love them enough. We don't love you enough, God. Not with the kind of love that you talk about throughout the whole Bible. The kind of love that you love us with, even though we're messed up sinners down here and don't deserve that kind of love. And the kind of love that you put in our heart and allowed us to then show others that, that love that you have. God, I just pray for everyone today to be conscious that their silence doesn't even have to be an approval. Their silence is okaying behaviors that are not acceptable to you. And you say right here in Romans, although they fully know God's righteous decree that those who practice such things deserve to die. They not only do them, but also approve of those who practice them. We know better. We know what the Bible says. Now it's time to start living it. In your son's name I pray. Amen.